Today, an introduction to this guy, the Jigsaw. If you haven't already, grab your saw, grab some safety glasses, and I'll see you in the shop. So, the Jigsaw, also known as the Saber Saw, is a fantastic tool for the carpenter because it's great for cutting irregular shapes and curves. It's great for cutting notches and framing and lumber and decking, for making curve cuts in plywood, and it works really well for cutting circles. Now this jigsaw is similar to a circular saw in the way that it actually has a blade, it has a handle and a trigger, and it has an adjustable base plate. But the jigsaw has a straight blade, and unlike the circular saw blade, this blade cannot be adjusted for the depth of cut. Now the two most common types of jigsaws in the market for residential construction are the top grip, like mine here with a trigger, and the other type has a barrel grip that puts your hand behind the motor and behind the blade for more control. Both are a great option in my opinion. It just all depends on, on feel and your personal preference. But either way you go, be sure that you buy a jigsaw that accepts T-shank blades. Trust me on that. So with that, blade selection is really important. First, before you buy a blade, you need to ask yourself, what am I cutting and how do I want that cut to turn out? And I know you guys have heard me say that before. So for instance, if you're cutting framing lumber and you need that cut to be fast, and not so clean, then choosing a blade with a lower TPI is what you're gonna need. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're choosing to uh, make a really clean cut, more precise cut, then choosing a blade with a higher TPI is what you're gonna need. What is TPI? TPI stands for teeth per inch. Somewhere on the packaging, it'll note the teeth per inch. So this is a three pack, and you can see on the bottom that it shows that it came with a 20 and two 14s. Also at the top, it, it also has a little logo that it fits the T-shank, which is very important. And sometimes, some packaging not only shows the uh, teeth per inch, but it also gives a description of what it's used for. And second, be sure to choose the right blade length. You need to make sure that the blade is at least an inch or really more than the depth of your material. And then third, I would buy blades that only cut on the upstroke. This represents really the majority of the blades out there, but you can buy blades that cut on the downstroke. Why is this important? Well, to answer that question, you first have to understand the cutting action of the jigsaw is up and down. When the blade is cutting on the upstroke, the base plate is being pulled in tight to the material. And then when the blade is cutting on the downstroke, it actually wants to lift the base plate off the workpiece, creating a better opportunity for kickback and injury. But as long as you use caution, these blades can be very, very beneficial. The other thing you need to understand is that when the blade is cutting on the upstroke, it creates tear out on the top side of the material, which could actually be your finished surface. And that's exactly why some people like to have blades that cut on the downstroke, because really the majority of the time when you're laying something out or drawing something, it's on the finished side of the wood. Let's move on to look at some of the features of this saw. First is a toolless blade release. This is super fast, very easy, and honestly, it's kind of fun. Next is the adjustable base plate, which then can be beveled to a 45 degree angle for making bevel cuts. And then third, the trigger is variable, meaning that the harder that you depress it, the faster the blade will go. This gives you a lot of control when making cuts. And lastly, the adjustment for the amount of reciprocation. What this means is set to zero reciprocation, the blade tracks perfectly up and down. But with different levels of reciprocation added, the blade will actually travel more in an oval shape pattern, sort of lunging forward, which produces a more aggressive cut. This is an example with no reciprocation added. And this is an example with it turned all the way up. Speed and quality really are the two main things that are affected with these adjustments. All right, let's talk about three types of cuts to the circuit saw. First is a, is a short straight cut, which is common for the saw because long cuts are not. So you could be used in, in finished carpentry, installing some cabinets. And for me, I've used it a ton of finishing off circular saw cuts on framing lumber. The regular cuts are very common and maybe one of the biggest uses of this saw. Great for cutting curves and with a thin scrolling blade, you're able to make some really tight curves. Lastly, cuts in the middle of the material. Things like circles, squares, or any other shape that you need. Now to do this, you need help from a drill bit. You simply drill a hole, insert the blade, and make your cut. For anything other than circles, sometimes multiple holes makes the job much easier. And if you need to, the jigsaw is great at nibbling away material. I do this all the time. 
Now I can't leave out the plunge cut. The plunge cut is a faster way to get the blade into the material without using a drill bit. Now it's going to leave a really rough cut, but that's what the plunge cut's all about. It's all about speed and it's all about I don't have a drill bit and I need to get this cut done. Now two things of caution. First, the plunge cut is a little sketchy. The saw will want to kick back on you if you don't come down just right or have the right angle or if the blade is too short. And that's what I found that the longer the blade, the better this plunge cut goes. Second, in regards to using the tool in general, always take the time to look under what you're cutting. It's so easy to forget about the rest of the blade that's traveling beneath the material. I've cut extension cords, I've cut its own cord, I've cut plumbing. Let's just say I've cut a lot more than just wood over the years of using this saw. But with a little bit of practice, you can get really good at this and it's a great asset to your toolbox. Well that's going to do it for the jigsaw today. If you're interested in learning more about other tools and their uses, you can head over to my website and click on my playlist called Tools and Uses. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment below. You can always email me at any time. It's been an honor being with you today, and until we see each other again, be well and stay safe.